I am near Tracy, California, in Northern California. Um, I found a cool place. It's called, uh, you know, usually we stop at like uh, Flying J or uh, Pilot or places like that, right? But uh, yeah, it's called Joe's Travel Plaza. And uh, it's pretty nice. Um, they've got a lot of stuff here. They've got uh, a Dickie's barbecue. They've got a uh, Denny's. And they also have McDonald's, uh, Carl's Jr., Subway. And then uh, the hidden gem is the Tandoori Flame, the Indian restaurant here. Um, I drive by this place, the sign's huge, like Tandoori Flame, but uh, their garlic naan is legit. So good. Uh, I just had their uh, chicken tikka masala and um, basmati rice, and uh, it was delicious. Um, I haven't had Indian food in uh, quite some time, but uh, did not disappoint. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. But um, this is kind of a cool place to stop. Uh, the sun's going down right here. Um, it's, it's a cool, probably like 65 degrees. Um, got cows in the hills. Let me see if I can show you the cows in the hills. Cows in the hills? Any cows in the hills? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, cows in the hills and, uh, you know, when the wind blows a certain way, you can smell it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's a good truck stop. Plenty of parking here tonight. I don't know how it is on busy nights, but tonight's not that busy and so it's pretty good uh, yeah they seem to have like about four or five uh, fueling stations a few uh, like a holiday inn and a days in and you know something like that right uh, places to sleep but every everywhere has a uh, truck parking but with all this truck parking as soon as I got off the freeway I went straight and it said dead end <laughs> what did I do I thought, oh, that's the entrance to the uh, Joe's uh, Travel Plaza. That's 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 the way to get into that truck parking, right? Yeah, I went in like a bonehead. I went into that dead end street and uh, ended up getting stuck. <laughs> Luckily, uh, there weren't any cars coming for a while, and I got to back up and I uh, turned turned myself out of there. But it was uh, yeah, it wasn't very smart. It was a very noob, very rookie move. <laughs> So far, uh, I'm really happy with this place. I'll probably be stopping by here more often. I usually go to that rest, rest stop a few miles down. But uh, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna be uh, coming here more often. Yep, life of a trucker. Finding new things, getting stuck in a dead end. Life of a trucker. It's 5.52. I'm in uh, Northern California, Joe's. Travel Plaza. Not too many trucks here. Well, I guess in the morning a lot of people took off already, but uh, that sunrise is amazing, huh? That's, the colors are just vibrant. It's amazing. at a truck stop in Northern California and this is my morning wake-up call here this is pretty amazing wow what's going on my people so this week was uh, a little bit drawn out I had a week that started on Monday and ended on Saturday. It felt like my hours were not as impactful. So the way that the government set up our hours is 11 hours of driving a day and 14 hours maximum uh, being on the clock a day. Um, and then 70 hours before you need to do your 34 hour reset. Now, the way I like to drive, as I mentioned previously, I like to do as much of the 14 hours of work each day so that within five days I could be done with my 70 hour very close to it right 65 to 68 hours usually 
So what ended up happening this week, uh, they gave me a, a route from Ontario to Stockton and back, basically three times back and forth. So a total of uh, three round trips and uh, six, six legs of the trip. What they decided to do was give me a one-way trip once a day for six days. And, and that ride is about six and a half, seven hours of driving. You've got your pre-trip, you've got your post-trip, you've got your stops along the way, uh, breaks. But at the end of the day, when you do that ride from point A to point B, back to point A again, and you're doing one leg each day, it ends up being like a realistically about an eight hour day minus traffic. I had some traffic in, in certain days and it lasted longer, but it didn't. The traffic is actually detrimental because you drive longer, but they still pay you for the miles. The faster you go, the more ground you can cover and they pay you by miles. The slower you go, I, I think that like the cutoff point is like 26 miles or something like that. It's better to make per hourly pay. It is what it is. Uh, being based out of Southern California, you're going to have traffic. I mean, you're going to have traffic. I, I try to avoid the traffic, so I leave at different times, earlier, later, whatnot. But unless you're leaving like in the dark, pretty much in the dark, you hit some kind of traffic, especially going through Pasadena or going... I avoid um, the 60 and the 10 pretty much all towards Los Angeles or in the Los Angeles area, unless my stop or my, um, my delivery point or my pickup point is based in Los Angeles or around those freeways. But for the most part, the only time I'm on the 60 and the 10 is beyond uh, the 57 freeway. This week should have been more efficient. I wanted it to be more efficient. Efficient meaning that I would like more than one assignment in a day. Most of our assignments currently, I haven't done any long distance like to Utah and back or anything like that yet. But most of our assignments are currently from Fontana, Ontario, Chino, you know, Southern California, and they go to parts of the Phoenix area or parts of Northern California. When you do those runs, you're looking at between 340 to like 400 miles one way. So one way is pretty much, like I said before, six to seven hours, right? I would like to drive as close to 11 hours in a day as possible. So that means I would have to have one assignment where I drive six to seven hours and then do a pickup or a drop, drop and hook, or um, a live unload or a live load or a relay. But at that point, I would need my next assignment right away so that I could keep rolling. So if, and that's how the 14 hour clock comes into play. So you start off your morning, you got your pre-trip, you get your pre-trip and you got your prep time. You look at, you know, you, you do your trip planning, you look at your routes and you, you map out pretty much how the day is going to go. And then uh, from that point on, you'll get to your destination, you'll do a pickup uh, and then, and then you'll, you'll leave for your destination. Once you get to your destination, then you want to go ahead and get your load unloaded and then pick up whatever's your next assignment, whether it's from that same location or you, you deadhead a little bit or bobtail or whatever the assignment tells you to do, you go and do. And then at that point, you probably have about five to seven hours left on your 14 hour clock. You also have about five hours left on your driving clock. So drivers like me, when I talk to my friends that are driving, drivers like me, we like to maximize that time. Not every driver's like this. It, you know, it wigs them out or stresses them out if they do more than one delivery or one assignment in a, in a day. And even sometimes the local drivers, I think they get sent like two assignments in one day, you know, and those are short drives, but they unload, pick up and unload twice a day. A lot of drivers that do local, they would like three or more because if they knock it out fast, it's more work for them and they like that. There are people that are wired to do that. They like the added work. And then there are people that go into a flow and they like doing it at their pace. I'm one of the people that like a lot of work and I like to control my time and I like to be efficient. So like I said before, as much of the 11 hour and as much of the 14 hour in one day is good for me. I would like to work as much of that time as possible. Drive 11, work 14. Those other people, and everybody's different, everybody has a different approach. They like to do more paced out, one assignment, take it easy, next assignment, whatnot. And they will make less money each week, but they probably won't have to work as hard and they won't be as stressed out. And some people, they don't they don't like the added burden of, of the go, 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 go type of mentality. You know, they like being more cautious, being more paced and a little bit more steady Eddie. Now, I realize that, um, so the way that our company is structured is that we have the drivers that are 
pretty much driving the vehicles. Then we have our uh, driver team leaders, the DTL is what they call, right? Uh, behind the scenes, but they are our main point of contact. So we, we know who our DTLs are. They pretty much act like our managers. Now the DTL has to represent the company. Usually when the company wants to have communication with the driver, they go through the DTL. So behind the scenes of the DTL, they also have what they call a planner. And this planner is the person that dispatches the workloads for the drivers. The drivers don't know who the planners are. They're invisible. They're behind the scenes. The form of communication we have for our assignments and our loads go through our DTL. Now the DTL, they know who the planners are and they talk to the planners all the time. The planners, a lot of times will frustrate the drivers. The drivers, a lot of times probably will frustrate the planners. Sandwiched in between all that is the DTL who has to play the communicator between driver and them and then the planner and them. So they're squashed in the middle, trying to communicate everything. Is this a good idea? To a certain degree it is because there's another layer that buffers a potential um, potential friction or, or uh, uh, issues, right? Relational relationship issues between the dispatcher and the driver, because that's that's a hot spot for a lot of companies. One way, I guess, they, that our company com combats that is they have the people the people in the middle, which are the details. So, in essence, it's like. Um, if you had a normal trucking company with the dispatcher being the manager type of person that works directly with the drivers, giving them their loads, also uh, uh, they're the point of contact for all the administrative stuff um, and whatnot. So us as drivers, some people just go with the flow and uh, whatever the planners assign to the drivers, we just do what we need to do, right? We just do our part and do the driving. But there's a handful of us that get really frustrated because a lot of the decisions that the planners make are not in tune with the needs of certain drivers. They almost have a cookie cutter formula on how they're going to approach every driver almost the same. But some, some of us drivers, we like maximizing our days and other drivers, they like being more paced. What happens currently with my assignments, it seems like I get one load or one assignment and then the next day I'll have an appointment at an awkward time. And there's huge gaps of six, you know, sometimes 18 hours, 20 hours. And I have to call in and then the DTLs will make an adjustment, make it into a relay or uh, sometimes on rare occasion, they'll pull that load and bring another load in. And um, it takes a lot of back and forth. Uh, it would be a lot easier if the planners had notes on what type of a driver you are and what type of driving you like, and they just gave you the loads accordingly. But for some reason, there's a huge gap in that communication. And um, they said our account's a new account and it's going to take time for things to smooth out. But the way the system is right now, there's a lot of redundancy and there is a lot of frustration, especially on the driver's side. There's a lot of frustration being felt because it feels like simple tasks that should happen don't happen. And there's no rhyme or reason why it doesn't happen. You know, staying busy when the when the loads are obviously there, staying busy shouldn't be a problem. But for whatever reason, um, we have a situation where I, I met a day cab guy who finished his work and was standing around and didn't have any loads. And then my buddy got a day cab load when he's a regional driver, a dedicated regional driver. And then I feel like there's not it almost feels like there's not enough work to go around. But then our department, our account just put out an ad on schneiderjobs.com looking for more drivers, regional dedicated drivers. So, you know, I'm only looking at it from my perspective. I know that this is a bigger, this is a little bit more complicated than my simplified view of this, right? Because you, you have people that are thinking long term and they anticipate the account getting busy. I know that some drivers left and I know that some drivers got fired. So they're trying to fill that void so they can continue to doing the work. Whatever the case may be, there is frustration from the drivers and there's frustration going on um, in my in our company and the way that it's set up with the planner, DTO and driver type of situation. If the planners can meet the needs of the driver and you have a happy driver, I think it's beneficial for everybody. But there seems to be a lot of unnecessary tension getting built up because a lot of the decisions that people are making behind the scenes are affecting the drivers and we are the ones that are actually taking the cargo right so hopefully things get better i'm still optimistic i don't think this is as serious of a problem as a, as some people feel like it is i am assuming that over time things will get better but uh, the DTLs probably have the best knowledge a lot of the details they're ex-drivers so they know what what what's going on but they can see the problems with the gap between the planners and the drivers. Because drivers, we, we create problems and issues too, I bet, and, you know, from their side. From the planner's side, they probably feel a lot of frustration when, when uh, maybe we don't do things like they think we should do, you know? So, but from the driver's side, we feel that too. But I think from the company's perspective, the person to talk to 
to get a full picture of this are the DTLs and they will know exactly what things that needs to happen to fix some of these problems. So I'm just talking primarily from the driver's view, right? The, from our, our perspective, it needs to get better. It's it's hard, you know, it's hard. We, we want like a handful of us want more miles, more efficiency, loads that make sense. As local drivers, I know they want to get as many loads as possible and stay busy every day. For us regional drivers, we don't want to touch local loads. If at all possible, we want to take something, if the appointment time's off, turn it into a relay and keep rolling, keep moving, keep moving. I think that will create the best efficiency for the company and for the drivers and everybody wins from that. So just my two cents this week. Uh, it, I didn't want it to be like a rant video or anything like that. And I hope you don't take it that way. It's just reality. I still like Schneider. I still believe in the company. There's no perfect company out there. And the amount of tension or communication problems that, are, that seems to exist in this company is very minimal compared to all the horror stories I hear about other companies. Uh, it's not perfect, but like I said, there's no perfect company out there. I still feel like there's enough positives at this company. I still think that the pros outweigh the cons. This week, I got decent miles. I got decent miles, but I had to work an extra day, which was, which was frustrating. Next week, I hope things get better. Um, I will keep you posted. Thanks to all of you who are following me on this journey. Have a great week. God bless. Peace. And I will talk to you soon. Cheers.